The Miami Heat will square off against the Boston Celtics in the Eastern Conference Finals. The Miami Heat once again are in the Conference Finals after defeating the Milwaukee Bucks in a gentleman's sweep. The Bucks need to surround Giannis with another shot creator who can take control of the game. The Miami Heat look deadly and I'll say this team has a great balance of veterans and strong young talent. All their young talent has to do is make shots, and they're very capable of doing that. They don't even have to make too much decisions consistently because they have veterans to do that for them in Goran Dragic and Jimmy Butler. This team is just built different. Then we are seeing how great the signing of Jay Crowder and Andre Iguodala are. The Heat are a team that is purposely designed to annoy every single team in the East. That's why they had the highest ceiling in the league to surprise everyone. My main gripe with the Heat was can they close out games consistently and maybe do they need another scoring option? Other than that, this team was built to cause havoc. I called it back in January that they had a chance to make it to the Eastern Conference Finals and this is the first time they are back there since the LeBron James Miami Heat led team. The Boston Celtics finished off the Toronto Raptors and yeah, the Raptors need Kawhi. Definitely need Kawhi. It was very evident in this series at the end of the day, the Celtics had too much firepower and they struggled finding someone who can consistently score. The Raptors need Kawhi and Pascal Siakam has long ways ahead to go to be a legitimate first option on a team. I am incredibly disappointed in Pascal, like very. I was very high on the Raptors and picked them to win this series because I believe that their defense was enough to slow down the Celtics, but great offense always trumps great defense at the end of the day. Then Marcus Smart was looking like Klay Thompson in that series and I should have expected that he would step up because he has that dog in him. Even when Jason Tatum struggled in some games, the games were very close. The ball can go in the hands of Kemba or Jalen Brown and they can very well step up and make plays. Now this series with the Celtics and Heat has me at a crossroads. The Celtics won the season series against the Heat. I think the Celtics has much more better talent, much more better stars than the Heat, but then the Heat has much more depth, much more dogs, and guys who can step up and put the ball in the hoop and also defend. I really believe this series will be a nail biter. It's, it's going to be close. It's going to be tough. And of course, Gordon Hayward is still out. Bam Adebayo is going to be key in this series for the Heat. He's going to have to assert himself inside against a Daniel Tice. Kemba Walker is the best point guard of this series, and he is much better than a Eric Bledsoe, and he's going to put a lot of pressure on the Miami Heat guards. For the Celtics to win this, Jason Tatum has to be the best player. He has been struggling lately, especially when finishing at the rim, but he's going to have to be scoring consistently in this series. The Heat have a lot of guys who can create their own shot and knock down shots, three-point shooters all around. Boston is going to have to match that and defend that at a high level. Boston is going to have to be able to defend the three consistently and limit the Heat in that. For the Heat, they're going to have to slow down Jason Tatum and Kemba Walker, and that's a tough task on its own, and knock down their threes consistently. In their regular season game on August 4th, the Celtics couldn't defend the three against the Heat, and even without Jimmy Butler, the Heat was able to beat the Celtics just on their shooting. It was a close game, but you can't give up a lot of threes to the Heat. I can honestly see this series going either way. My prediction, and I'm doubling down on this team, I see the Miami Heat winning this series in seven hard-fought, exhausting games at advance to the NBA Finals. This Heat team has been incredibly hot, much more consistent, and they actually have their top players performing like top players. It feels weird a bit because this is the second time betting against the Celtics in the playoffs. 
I'm sorry Celtics fans, but trust me, I see their talent. It wouldn't surprise me if they win this series either. It, it honestly can go either way, just like how I said the Raptors series. But I'm doubling down on the heat here. It's going to be a great series. I can see this seven games instantly. But this series won't be quick. It will be hard fought. And as I said, it will go seven games. The Celtics showed a lot of points where they slowed down and allowed the Raptors to come back. The Heat are too much dialed in right now. And I can't pass up the NBA season's underdog. What I'm worried about the Heat here is if they play at a very slow pace and some of their offense becomes stagnant at times, it may be easier to defend for the Celtics. The Celtics can definitely win in the transition game against the Heat if they are able to force turnovers. The Celtics have guys who can attack and get to the rim consistently, which is another weakness of the Heat is limiting who scores in that paint. These two teams are matched up with size, but the main thing for the Celtics is to limit the Heat's three-point shooters, run them off the three-point line. For the Heat, you have to be consistent in knocking down shots, have to make shots difficult for Kemba Walker, might want to place a bigger defender on him. I'm still pulling for the Heat to win, but please let me know who you guys got in the comment section below, and thank you guys for watching this video.